Good, 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 good. Hey everyone. Hello. Hi, Tiffany. Hello. Oh, I didn't have my video on. I didn't realize that. Gordon, thank you for giving the clock prime seating at the meeting. Oh, 
There it is. Okay. Okay, it is 7 p.m. Uh, Commissioner Parks is still waiting in the area. Gordon, can we get Brenda promoted, please? Her name is under Brenda Dawson. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, how are you? Hi, Brenda. Hey, Brenda. Hello. Hi, Brenda. Hello. Uh, Beth and and Lorraine. <clears throat> Is Leroy under this Tamira name? I don't see her. No, I don't see her yet. Also, and then we'll be started at 7 o'clock. Gordon, Jeff is here. <clears throat> Okay, so officially I will call the meeting to order. Allison, your sound keeps cutting out. I'm going to switch to phone audio just so it's cleaner. Tiffany, while we waiting, let's uh, tomorrow when I get some time, let's discuss that house. Okay. Yeah. Just, okay. just give me a call. I'm, I'm available pretty much all day. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, so I will call the meeting to order. It is 7.03. Uh, Aaron or Commissioner Palmer, would you please do the roll call? Yes, 4B01. Present. 4B02, present. 4B03. Present. 4B04. Present. 4B05, vacant. 4B06. Present. 4B07. Present. 4B08. Present. 4B09. Present. Well, we have everyone here and a quorum. Wonderful. Um, we'll start under administrative items. We'll ask all of the residents or let all of the residents know that um, when you have questions, you can type your questions into the Q&A or chat, uh, and we'll get to those questions first before we recognize anyone else. 
uh, we ask that you use the raise your hand function on the if you're uh, on the uh, screen. If you're calling in from your phone, um, is it star nine, Gordon, for someone to unmute themselves? Yep, star you can unmute yourself with star nine. If you're star nine to raise hand, star six on raise hand. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. So those are our virtual meeting instructions. We'll move into the consideration and approval of the February agenda. Uh, before I submit that for your approval, there are a few changes that need to be made. If you look at items number 10, 11, and 12, they are misnumbered. Resolution 4B, item number 10, excuse me, should be resolution 4B21-0204. Resolution number 4B21-0205 uh, should be item number 11. And resolution number 4B21-0206 should be item number 12. Are there any other questions about the agenda? Is there a motion to accept the agenda as amended? I so move. All right, thank you. Is there a second? I was about to say it'll be a really quick meeting if no one approves the agenda. Uh, <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And for me, would you please raise your hand so that I know everyone is voting? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Brenda, you're not on camera. Are you voting in favor? Yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, the agenda is approved as submitted with correction. Uh, the January uh, meeting minutes have been circulated. Um, does anyone have any questions or concerns with regard to correction? Um, I will just briefly note that Commissioner Brahma Jims uh, submitted a correction to the, the account funds and I've made that correction. So that is in the minutes as most recently. Sir. Wonderful. Thanks for doing All right. that. Is there a motion? I make Is there a motion, motion to, to approve? approve these? I make a motion to approve Is the there a second? as amended. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, LaRoya. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 LaRoya, did you put your hand up to, to yes, approve, to Sorry. accept it? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, the agenda, the meetings are, minutes are accepted as amended. Next on the agenda is the treasurer's report. And you Commissioner Bromagen. Yeah, thank you. Um, the only update I have is to provide our current uh, balance in our checking account. Uh, and it is almost exactly the same as last month. We have $33,361.50. So we have about a dollar more in interest than we did last month. Um, so well, Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, we'll move on to commissioner updates. I'll just go in numerical order. Um, if you have an update, 4B01. Not at this days. time. Thank you, 4B02. I just have one quick update, which is that on Thursday at 7 p.m., I'm hosting a single member district meeting with DDOT to discuss a notice of intent for safety improvements at the intersection of Whittier Street 8th Street and Piney Branch Road, and I will drop the link to RSVP for that meeting if anybody is interested. Thank you. All right, 4B04, I'm sorry, three. Uh, I guess uh, today I wanted to reintroduce myself again as the uh, 4B03 uh, new count, uh, ANC commissioner, and I will put my contact information in the chat. I didn't know to do that last month. Sorry. So uh, no problem. I want everybody to know who I am if I have anybody in the meeting. Hi. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. 4B04? No, I don't. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. 4B05, I will make that update. Um, we are aware that that uh, 4B05 is currently vacant. As we announced last month, because of the uh, public health emergency, we cannot, or the city is not holding special elections at this time. In an effort to um, provide support to 4B05, we will be hosting a single member district meeting 
on Thursday, March 4th at 6.30 p.m. And as many of us as can be, that can be present will be present for that meeting. Um, and for those of you that are currently in 4B05, we ask that you spread the word um, to help us get that information out to as many people as possible. Thank you. 4B06. Uh, just an update that uh, if you are able on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., um, there will be a special news report uh, on abcnews.com uh, uh, regarding our efforts to get our senior citizens vaccinated. Um, so if you are so inclined, please take a look at that. Uh, and spread the word to help our senior citizens get vaccinated. Thank you. 4B07. Uh, I don't have any updates, I don't think. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I am 4B08. My update is that I have been working with seniors in the community to help get them vaccinated. If you're aware of anyone that would like to be vaccinated, and has yet to get an appointment, please let me know. Uh, again, spread that word as well. And uh, 4B09, you're up next. Hi, um, same here. I have been working with residents as well to coordinate vaccinations. Um, also want to mention at Riggs LaSalle, that's at 501 Riggs Road at the intersection of Riggs and Nicholson Street Northeast. On Wednesday, anyone can get tested for COVID between 12 and four. Um, so if you have any questions, please reach out. I can put in the chat the link if you wanna make an appointment. However, there are walk-ups um, for the appointment and they have made accommodations for seniors. Again, this is testing. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam yeah. Chair, I would like to thank you and um, LaRoya, I have I got my shot today. All right. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Um, we're going to move on to community concerns. Um, uh, excuse me, Quickie. Yeah. Brenda, do you know you're not on the TV? I mean, on the computer? I didn't know she knew. Because just like you said something about... Uh, her name would, but her name. Oh, that's okay, sweetheart. Everybody knows how I look, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> thank you so, so much. <laughs> we're we're going to move to community concerns. I ask that okay. residents use the raise your hand button via Zoom or star nine on the telephone. Um, they're already, there's already one question in the q and I do see that hands are raised. I will get to you uh, as quickly as possible. Um, Commissioner Yates, would you mind reading the Q and A? Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure what this question is in relation to. So maybe if you want to clarify a little more, it just says: Must you be a homeowner within 4B to run, or may you be may you be a community business leader? Um, I don't know if they're talking about the vacant seat or what, but the the. Um, so I don't know where that's best directed. If you want to clarify your question, we can ask it again. Okay, we'll come back to that. Um, I don't see anything else in the chat specifically that is a question. Um, we had two uh, requests oh. by uh, organizations to speak at this meeting um, in the community concerns section. One was Lester Wallace, uh, and I don't see him listed as an attendee. Um, so we, if he's here, if you he can raise his hand, uh, if you're listed somehow under a different name, if you could raise your hand, I would appreciate it. Or let me know in the chat that you're here uh, and we'll get back to you. The other one was uh, a representative from Coolidge uh, Senior High School. I don't see them in the list either. Um, so if you are here, if you could drop something in the chat so we know that you're here, I'd appreciate it. Meanwhile, we'll move on to the uh, residents who have hands raised, and we'll start with Ms. Mack. Can you unmute yourself, Ms. Mack? Um, or yes, I'm Gordon, okay can you now. Unmute her? I, have, yeah. I have the answer. I, I was trying to take my hand off of it. Thank you, though. Okay. okay. Um, 
Next, we'll go to Kimberly Smith Herndon. Can you unmute yourself, please? You should be able to speak. I'm speaking. Can you hear me? Barely. Sorry, guys. Is this better? I think if you just, yep, much better. Okay. Um. Good evening. My question is, we uh, have neighbors who have a rooster, hens, chickens, and ducks, and we've contacted DC. They've sent someone out, but in addition to that, it's causing them to have rodents. I've seen a total of about four rats. Um in their yard and so I just want to know what if anything by way of assistance could be offered from our ANC. Would you mind telling me what area you're in so I know who you're or do you know who your commissioner is? It's Miss Allison. It's me? I'm so sorry. We've not That's met. Okay. Um, no, me. We um uh, my neighbor introduced us to you. We voted for you. <laughs> oh well thank you. Um um, we can talk offline if you okay. like, and I can have DOH come out um, and um, perhaps work with your, your neighbor. Um, okay. Would you great. mind emailing me? Let me let me give you my phone number and then you can text me your information. How about that? That sounds good. Let me get a pen real quick. One second. I'll put it in the chat for you. Okay. Either way, it's fine. Thank you. If you're ready, I'll tell you. I'm ready. It's 240-423-0809. It's four zero zero eight two six. Yep. Okay. And now I think I know where you live. So um, I should be, I mean, you're, I mean, I recognize your name now. So um, we can talk shortly. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Um, next was, this name will sound familiar. Scott Knickerbocker, Commissioner, good evening. Good evening, Commissioners. Hope everyone's doing well tonight. Can you hear me all right? Excellent. Yeah. Um, just two quick items I wanna uh, briefly address. One is that the um, slow street signs seem to be kind of moving around. I don't know, um, particularly at Van Buren and Georgia, I don't know if they were moved for, for uh, snow activity or not, but they have some they work. The back. Um, the second one is more of a suggestion. Uh, one of the things that I miss a lot about the in-person meetings is in the beginning of the, you know, before meetings start, everybody's got a chance to mill around and chit chat. And I don't know if this is even logistically possible, but if, um, you know, if meetings can start maybe 10 minutes early where people can kind of um, chat with each other live and whatnot, it might be a cacophony of, of voices going, but just wanted to offer that suggestion. Thank you. I'll just echo, Commissioner Brooks said this, but the slow street signs have been moving back and forth a lot lately for snow removal. So they've been kind of all over the place and hopefully as the weather warms, we'll see them moved back. And if not, I will help to move them back. So thank you for bringing <laughs> Um, lastly, there seems to be someone on a phone, 981. With a question, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hello? Yes, hi. Hi, may I speak? Yes, you may, go ahead. Uh, my name is Ella Braddock and I live in Ward 4. And I want to ask a question. Is this the appropriate meeting where I can ask the question? My daughter, and I'm 68, and I live with my mm -hmm. daughter, and every mm -hmm. time she applies for affordable housing, it's either she's $10 over the income guideline and doesn't get the apartment, or she's $20 over the income guideline, and I receive Social Security benefit. 
and she, well, since the COVID, she has been working part-time, and we have, she's in all the program to get affordable housing. But each time is or either the income tax credit housing, each time she apply, it always comes back as $20 over income or $10 over the income guideline. What is the solution and how are you going to combat that? Because she does have an eight-year-old son. And right now we're living in a one bedroom and the rent is 2100 a month. And without my social security check, we wouldn't be able to make the rent. So we are trying to get into one of the affordable units. So, but my income hinders her and it has to be reported. But as I die today or tomorrow, the Social Security check will be cut off. So how do we get something that is affordable until she can get back to work full time? I don't know when that's going to be. So what is the Ms. solution? Braddock. Yes. Ms. Braddock, um, yes. would it be possible for you to give one of us a call? Because I'm uncomfortable discussing financial information in this yes. form. Yes, I, I would understand. rather talk to you privately. Is that okay? Yes. Oh, I can. Okay. I, where I, where do you where do you live so I can figure out which commissioner would be best suited to help you? Uh, I live at um, six to five oh five, Fourteenth Street Northwest, apartment three oh eight. Okay. Um, why and don't I? Why, I'm going to give you my phone number. Okay. And I'm going to ask you to give me a call if you don't mind, because I don't also don't want you to give out your phone number here. Okay. So no, I will give I you my phone mind. number and ask that you call me tomorrow. Is that okay? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Your name? Allison, A-L-I-S-O-N. Mm-hmm. And my last name is Brooks. Mm-hmm. And my phone number is 240. Mm-hmm. 423. Mm-hmm. 0826. Also, um, yes, ma'am. Uh, Council Member Lewis George's staff is on this call. Mm -hmm. and so we might be able to get you connected to them and get you some assistance as well. But, um, you know, there are, there are a bunch of people on this call mm -hmm. that should be able to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead of giving you a whole bunch of phone numbers right now, mm -hmm. we'll start with just mine. And then tomorrow morning, uh, we'll get you pointed in the right direction. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate that. And I really would. You're very welcome. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't know whether this was the, you know, proper form, you know, but I wanted to address that situation. Absolutely. And there are a couple mm -hmm. of people that are going to speak. And when they give out their phone numbers, I will make a point to tell you to write their numbers down as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Um, there are a few more questions, um, a few more hands raised. Um, next would be Julie Lawson. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, <laughs> sorry, thanks for having us. Um, I just wanted to give <laughs> commissioners a heads up that, um, you know, as you know, um, and many of you have seen for yourself the condition of Whittier Education Campuses facility. Um, the parent community and some of our neighbors have a, uh, launched a campaign, a letter writing campaign to DCPS, the DME, and the mayor's office to request um, moving us up in the modernization schedule. Right now, we're not scheduled to uh, begin design until fiscal year 2026, um, which has us reopening with a new building in 2028. Um, so we have been doing a lot of letters. Um, we've had given tours to Councilmember Lewis George and to Mokers, um, and we did receive a response from the Chancellor. But I know that you passed a resolution a year or two ago urging this modernization. I think the most urgent issue for us is we don't have an elevator, and it's two three-story buildings with no elevator. And next year we will have six self-contained classrooms for um, children with um, extreme disabilities. So um, this is a critical need. 
also as a need for a STEM campus to have appropriate facilities. So um, we really appreciate all the help that we've gotten, but I wanted to let you know about this campaign so that you're aware <laughs> um, as neighbors start activating around it. So thanks for all your support to date. And I think you'll expect to hear from us more as time goes on. Thank you. Um, next is Sheila Tyson. Shalia, I'm sorry, Tyson. Can you hear me? You're very soft, but I can hear you. Oh, okay. Because I actually I was getting ready to go on my computer. The phone is not that good. But anyway, good evening. Um, good evening. Yeah, I was calling because I just found out recently that we didn't have an AMC uh, representative. So I think I need you to speak up, shout for me, because it's hard to hear you. you. Sound muffled. I just found out that we don't have an ANC representative. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. I can. Yeah, I was calling the, well, that, that, that's the concern. Um, you know, we had a shooting there on my block, 400 block of uh, Marietta recently. Mm -hmm. I out to him and I found out that he uh, moved out of the neighborhood. So what, what, what are y'all planning to do how we gonna handle this, have them all. So I'm gonna guess you missed maybe the first five minutes of the meeting. So I'm gonna repeat what we said earlier. So I apologize to oh, everyone okay. else, but no, no problem. Um, we, during the pandemic, during the public health emergency, um, there will be no special election. So the seat is vacant. We're aware of that. And we've all decided that we can do our best to cover uh, 4B05. We are having a single member district meeting for 4B05 on Thursday, March 4th at 6.30 p.m. Obviously it will be virtual. So we're gonna get information out to people about that. And we ask that you spread the word. Okay, that's good. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so we also, the, there is a mailbox for 4B05. It's 4B05. Uh, well, it doesn't make any sense to give that out because it's not being covered. So there is a message on that mailbox that indicates that you should call, uh, email um, now what um, we're the, uh, so see y'all don't have no secretary like Jim. I mean, no, you, you still don't have nobody answering the phone even. So, you? so, so, um, we do. Oh, you do. Um, I'm going to suggest that we talk offline as well, so that we can keep the meeting moving, because oh, okay. a, a lot of this was already, um, hand, you know, given out. But okay. um, Gordon Chapin, who's on this meeting right now, has stepped in okay. to take over some of the role of some of the role that Jim had, but not all of it. Okay. So um, I'll give with my to number back to you. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. And then uh, we can coordinate the meeting on the fourth, and you're letting your neighbors and everything know that would be helpful as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome, Commissioner Palmer. Yeah, I just wanted to add um, for Ms. Tyson that last month we passed a resolution urging the DC Council and the Office of ANCs and the Board of Elections to work to figure out a mechanism to fill these vacancies. So we're trying to address it in terms of um, working with residents, but also fixing the systemic problem to actually get somebody into the seat. And we'll keep people posted on that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay, so I don't see any other questions. I don't see any more hands raised. So we will move on to the report, item number five on the agenda. And we will begin with the Office of Ward 4 City Council Member, uh, Janice Lewis-George. And I believe Tamara Gordon needs to be elevated. All right, Tamara, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Tamira Benitez. I am the Constituent Service Coordinator with the Office of Janice Lewis Church. I live in 4 uh, BO4 and grew up in Ward 4, went to Aliceo Wilson, so I'm part of the community, been here for, for a little bit. Super excited to be here with you. I'm gonna keep it short because I only have three minutes and I have a lot of uh, things to provide you. Um, I'm going to keep the vaccine uh, updates uh, a little bit short because I know that Yami, or, uh, actually, no, uh, uh, Mr. Mitchell is here, so he'll be able to provide further information on that. But uh, the main thing uh, is uh, 
phase 1C is going to start March 1, and the most significant part of that is that individuals with pre-existing health conditions will be able to start booking appointments uh, to get the vaccine. Um, another thing that I wanted to highlight in regards to uh, the vaccines, it's a big win that we had. Uh, Lamon Recreational Center, uh, we moved from Hattie Homes to Center. The first day was pretty messy. Uh, there were a lot of things that were happening uh, there. Uh, half of the stuff that does the vaccination was not available. We went, we went to the site, we observed, we actually helped. Uh, the milkers were there as well, uh, helping. Yami was there, Anthony was there, helping out just uh, the process to make sure that everyone was safe and good and that we were able to, to support. But like I said, first day was messy. Uh, we were there for the snow as well because it was open throughout the snow and uh, we have not heard anything negative happening after after the, the first day and the snow. So it sounds like uh, the plan worked. There, this, there is, it's a more spacious space where we can serve uh, seniors uh, safer and faster and hopefully lines will not be queuing anymore. So that's a, that's a big success. Um, so we uh, uh, we thank you for all the support and we thank you for uh, keeping us updated with what was going on with Hattie Homes and uh, things that happen at the uh, Lamont Recreational Center. Uh, the other thing that I want to make sure that you that you know I am hearing all of the commissioners are helping seniors uh, get vaccinated. That's amazing. Uh, yes, uh, the Department of Health has a, a registration link. Uh, to, to do that, that's the process that the city has, but there are other um, uh, healthcare providers providing uh, appointments. Uh, Howard Center, Howard uh, Hospital is one of them. We have been publishing that. We send it to the ANC commissioners and we have been publishing, publishing that on our social media accounts and our newsletters to ensure that people are able to book appointments. We uh, since uh, let's see, we, we, I checked out the link, it doesn't seem that they have any appointments available uh, for a little bit, but keep checking that link. I'm gonna drop it in the chat and I'm, ho I'm hoping that commissioners are able to do a follow-up email to continue sharing this as well, since I'm gonna be sharing a couple of links. Let me make sure where am I? Uh, let me make sure I'm sticking to the to the guidelines. We are also taking names uh, from community members, seniors uh, 65 and above that uh, are not able to access an appointment, but it sounds like there are several community members uh, taking names as well. So we just want to be added to to your uh, to your resources to book an appointment. If you're having any issues uh, about confirming your appointment, the best strategy is to email them. If you do not have access to an email, please give us a call so that we're able to email uh, vaccinate at dc.gov to inquire about your appointment. I know that other people have said to call the call center. The call center does not, uh, is not able to help you confirm your appointment. So vaccinate at dc.gov uh, is the best email. Uh, I'm gonna drop it in the chat as well once I'm, I'm done with, uh, with my briefing on that. All right. I'm going to switch over to the leg legislative side. Extremely important uh, as a community organizer. I was often in, at the Wilson Building providing testimony because aside from having ANC commissioners and your council member, uh, your own voice is the most important uh, voice that you have in the district. So providing testimony for performance over meaning you go to the DC Council and you tell the DC Council how DC agencies that are providing you with services uh, and programs, how they are doing, how they should improve, or if they're doing a good job, uh, telling them that they're good in, doing a good job. It is extremely important to do so. Uh, so I highly encourage you to attend the performance oversight hearings. I am going to share information on how to- Samira. Yes, ma'am. You're running long. You're running a little oh, okay. long. So I most <laughs> One DDAD is this Friday uh, on the 26th. I'm gonna encourage you to uh, provide that information. The, the uh, council member is also going to be introducing legislation. Uh, uh, their priorities are technology, uh, also uh, some traffic, some traffic bills as well, public safety bills. So look out for that one. I also wanted to provide you with some information about the shooting that happened on Friday. Friday night at the 600 block of Chilliam 
place. Uh, we were on site, council member, myself on, on, on site, just to make sure that, you know, everything, I mean, things, it was a shooting, so things were not well, but we were on site just to uh, hear what was happening. I'm gonna drop the report from MPD on what happened on that night. Just the highlight on that is that there were two Maryland residents that were having a dispute and they shot at each other. MPD thankfully showed up and prevented anything else from have it happening. Regretfully, one person died. The other one just, you know, is surviving in the, they're, they're alive, they're, they just have injuries, but they're they're not as severe. Uh, the last thing- Let's end with your phone number. Let's, let's end okay. with your cell phone number for Ms. Braddock. Ms. Braddock, if you're listening, Thank take you so down much. Samira's number. I promise <laughs> Give her I'm your number. Mean, okay, 202-288-3401. Two zero two two eight eight three four zero one. I promise I'll get better at this. <laughs> no problem. You'll be hanging around for a little while, right? In case other questions come up. Okay, great. So we'll move on to. Um, I believe it's Yamalise is replacing Anthony tonight. Um, Yamalise, welcome. Take yourself off of mute, please. Okay. I'm doing this one on my phone. Can you guys hear me, see me? Okay. Hello, yes. everyone. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was just on another uh, Zoom meeting. But um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Yamaleth Escobar. I am Anthony Mitchell's partner. So I'm the other half of the Ward 4 Mokers. I am a DC native and um, I'm happy to be here. So just to share some quick updates from you all. Um, the... Um, Total doses delivered as of two nine of, no, let's not start there. Let me start this over. As of, um, sorry, totally writing the wrong email. Okay, let's start this over. Beginning this week, um, no, beginning last week, vac vaccinations appointments will become available on alternative weekly schedule with appointments becoming available at 6 p.m. on Thursdays and Fridays one week and at 9 a.m. on Thursdays and Fridays the following week. So last week, the appointments became, um, the call center opened at 6 p.m. instead of 9 a.m. and as well on Fridays. So this week it will open at 9 a.m. on Thursdays for priority zip codes and then 9 a.m. on Friday again. Um, individuals now available, I mean, now qualify for the vaccine as of, February 17th, individuals who work in the grocery store settings, health and human services and social services, outreach workers, individuals who work in manufacturing and individuals who work in food packaging um, facilities, person who works at like food markets, uh, volunteer for food distribution, things of that nature. Um, beginning of March 1st, DC will open, will move forward into phase 1C tier one, and the following population will become eligible for vaccines, which is which will include DC residents who are between the ages of 16 through 64 with um, qualifying medical conditions. And you can always visit coronavirus.dc.gov to find out um, which medical conditions do follow under that category. As of now, there is equal amount of appointments allotted for Thursday and Friday. Both days have 2,450 vaccinations appointments available. Um, as the week of January 25th, DC Health began um, on-site vaccinations to DC Housing Authority senior properties as part of the senior vaccine initiative. Um, also, OZ has been um, in, in contact with teachers, making sure the vaccine has been distributed to public schools, charter schools, and independent schools as well. Um, there's a faith in vaccine initiative, which is, um, DC health is working with leadership council for healthy communities and the black coalition against COVID to further engage the faith-based community with goals of spreading the word about the safety and effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccine and supporting residents in getting vaccinated. Um, additional appointments for vaccine is Howard University Hospital, Midstar Georgetown University Hospital, Midstown Washington Hospital, Georgetown Washington University Hospital, Sibling, and um, Kaiser. Um, and as um, Tamir mentioned, we did, um, 
the new location has been moved to Lamont Riggs from um, I forgot the name of the, the other place. Hattie Homes. <laughs> Hattie Homes. From Hattie yes. Homes. So they're no longer at Hattie Homes. It, um, they were moved um, to Lamont Riggs because there's a bigger space and there was a little confusion on the first day that they were opened. I did see Tamira there with her team and we are, we were able to get the line moving and help seniors get registered. I mean, do the intake process and get their second dose. So we haven't heard anything as of about like complaints as of now. So we're gonna hope, keep our fingers crossed that everything moves smoothly. And I mean, that's about it. That's all we have. If you guys have wonderful. I'm gonna take questions from I'm going to take questions okay. from commissioners, and then I will move to residents after that. You can ask okay. questions of either Tamira or Yamali. Um, and this time, I, since I make always start with one, I'll work backwards. So, LaRoya, you go first. Yeah, I just wanted to make a correction because it gets confusing when you say Lamont. So we have Lamont at 20 Tuckerman Street Northeast, and then you have Lamont Riggs, which is in my SMD. Totally right. two different areas. Right. So right. the vaccination site is not Lamont Riggs. I just want people to not be confused with that. Right, that, that was my mistake. The, Thank the, you. The, 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 yeah, because it, it happens all the time. You say Lamont, <laughs> it's like, okay, Lamont and the Riggs. So right. I just had a okay. follow up with Tamira. Uh, with respect, um, got a call from a resident who was able to get the vaccine in Petworth at Safeway. Um, and so she called me yesterday. Um, and so when she got the vaccine, um, I think they had two appointments left. She did not get the second appointment. And so she got it January 30th. I've reached out to Matt. He said he'd reach out to the uh, senior, but her timeline is kind of growing there. And so um, if we could follow up, I do know the resident has not been called yet. Um, the question was whether or not um, the, your office could work with Safeway. She has her documentation to show when she got the first vaccine so that she gets the second vaccine. Definitely. There are links for that, and I'm happy to send them to you so that you can have them for all the Safeway locations. No, no. So she went to Safeway, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why she needed the help from your office, if possible, because she for did sure. not get the second appointment, although she got the first vaccine. That, that's where she needed the help. Thank you for that clarification. What I'm saying is I would like to equip you with the links so that when you have community members like this, you're able to do it yourself. But we're happy to help. Oh, no. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Um, let's work our way backwards. So I'm eight. I don't have any questions. Jeff, uh, Commissioner Bramagen, do you have any questions? I have to get better at titles. <laughs> no, I, I don't have anything for right now. Thanks. Commissioner Tiffany Johnson. Uh, just a, a question, and it, it actually kind of links back to uh, Commissioner Huff's question. Um, what do our senior citizens do? Well, it's a two-part question. What do our senior citizens do when they are not able to uh, schedule their second appointment uh, for the second dose of the vaccine? And then also, will there be any information disseminated, any flyers that we can hand out to our constituents uh, regarding the new tier guidelines of who is eligible as of, of March 1st? Is that question for Tamira? And, and that's Commissioner that's Johnson? for, that's whoever. for Yamalee and Tamira, whoever. Whoever has the answer? <laughs> okay, go ahead. So what I can share is uh, if they got it at Safeway, uh, there are, like, like like I was mentioning before, certain links that we can help people navigate if they are, do not have access to a computer. Uh, what we have been able to do is connect with uh, uh, the vaccinate at dc.gov email address and uh, provide information from the community member and request that they get a call back. However, that puts too much uh, work on the on the senior. We have not had that many cases where seniors cannot uh, uh, schedule the second appointment, or at least uh, we, ha we have not gotten those requests yet. It could be because you all are doing an amazing job of helping seniors. Uh, but I will find out more information. Perhaps Yamilet has more access to this type of information than, than I do. But what I can tell you is like, I will bring this up 
to uh, uh, the office and we actually have weekly briefings with DOEH where we are able to submit questions. Tomorrow, but before noon, we can submit questions and on Wednesday, they answer questions and concerns from community members. So I will add this question to that. So what is the systematic way in which seniors can seniors that don't have access to a computer to schedule their second appointment? Usually it's done on site, but if they don't do it on site, we'll find out a way to, uh, to provide that information. For the uh, educational uh, materials, I did see that DOH does create those and they provide those to us. Uh, so it's on the website, they also provide them to us, but I'll find those links and facilitate that to, uh, to you. Unless Yamile has that information and can share it right away with us. If you could, if you could send All that right, link to me, to Mira, that would be greatly appreciated because I can disseminate it to my constituents. Thank you. All right. Does anyone else have a question? Any other commissioners? Go ahead, Commissioner Yates. I think Commissioner Johnson's in order before me. I saw her hand go up. You're right. I just saw her hand. Go ahead, Commissioner Jocelyn Johnson. I have a question to either one of you. I had several people who, uh, seniors who went to the Mon Riggs at 20, Tuckerman, they saw a lot of conversation and all this going on among the staff of the facility. And what happens is they, they take the shot and then they tell them to go sit down and wait for 15 minutes. They ended up waiting a half an hour, 45 minutes. Nobody came back to tell them. I heard this three or four times. Please ask somebody to check on the groups in the back or wherever they put the people so that they will not be forgotten about. They just sit there un unless someone of their family or someone comes and says something to them. Seniors are not really aggressive and they're not going to say anything. At least the ones that said something to me didn't. And it looks bad. It looks like they're just chatting and playing and all that and they're not seeing what's going on. And somebody could be sick. Somebody could be in distress or whatever, and nobody bothered to check and see what was going on. So, okay. Thank you, Ms. Johnson, for letting that us know. Happening. Happening. That might be happening in more places than Lamont. So, you could put that on somebody's radar screen. Okay. I'll definitely bring that up and flag that up for them to be aware of the timing and time frame of having the seniors wait for well, so just, long. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Just periodically check on them. Right, right. Of course. Thank you. Commissioner Yates. Yeah, my question is for either Tamira or Yamileth about the school budget process. As you know, DCPS um, put out their proposed budgets for all the schools, um, all the elementary schools in our area, uh, Tacoma, Whittier, LaSalle, Bacchus, all got significant projected budget cuts um, for gen ed teachers at LaSalle, three uh, ELL teachers at Whittier, for ELL teachers at Tacoma. So the, and, but the budgets list separate stimulus money that's being managed by Central. So my question is, why isn't that money being used to defer the cuts in staffing for our schools? And why isn't the mayor or the council uh, holding our schools harmless during a pandemic year for enrollment drops and ensuring that the funding at least stays stable for our children? A really good question. I do not have an answer to that, but I'll bring it back to the legislative team to take a look at that. We'll follow up with you. Thank you for asking it. Yeah, Commissioner Yates, I'm going to have to agree uh, with Tamira on this. I do not have the answer to that, but I have wrote it down. I would um, loop Anthony in, and as soon as we hear back and have a response for you, we will follow up. Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Okay, I believe there's one hand raised, which is Ms. Mack. Ms. Mack, take yourself yes, off please. mute. Okay, I took off off mute. Thank you, Allison. My question is for Yami. Mm -hmm. Yami, I can never get your name right. But you mentioned as far as getting the start, shots um, starting on March the 1st. I, I am a volunteer for nonprofit. I delivered uh, meals to the seniors in my neighborhood. I help out with Andre Lee. Does that make me considered to be able to get a shot? How would I re go about registering? How, is that for nonprofit organizations or what? Well, I was able to help um, a lady who volunteers um, for food distribution to yeah. cure an appointment. So all you have to tell them that 
is that you do work in a food distribution center, that you volunteer constantly, and that you are, have direct contact with food distribution, and they should be able to um, schedule your appointment now, not not to March 1st. Okay, who should I contact as far as getting this appointment for now? You you will call the call center, or you can do it through vaccinate.dc.gov on Friday. At 9 a.m.? Yep. This week, okay, this week will be 9 a.m. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Okay, um, so I don't believe there are any other questions right now. I don't see any in the chat or the Q&A. Commissioner Yates, do you see anything? I don't wanna miss anything. Okay, well, thank you both. Uh, and we're gonna move up, uh, Gordon, we're gonna move up, uh, Frazier O'Leary, please, Ward 4 State Board of Education Representative. He's coming. Can you hear me? We can. I don't, I don't know if you can see me. I can't see me on mine. But if you can't nope, see- Nope, we don't see you. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I, it looks like your camera's off, your video's off. I don't have, I don't have any way to get to um, the, um, the screen. <laughs> I don't have anything to mm -hmm. do with the screen. Wait a minute, wait a minute, maybe I do. Let me see what this does. Uh, okay, I got you. There I am. There you go. Okay. How y'all doing? <laughs> I, uh, Wonderful. <laughs> uh, I'll be quick. I hope everyone is aware of how community involvement worked in helping the mayor to change your mind about the historic military road school, which is now going to be available in August to pre-K for any eligible children in the city. Uh, there's a long story behind that. I'm not gonna tell you about that unless you ask me a question in a little bit about it, all right? But it, but it really was, it was, it was ANC 4A, ANC 4C, ANC 3 and 4G that uh, along with the Brightwood community and Shepherd Park and a whole lot of community members who lobbied uh, the, the, the mayor and the council members were on our side and, it, and democracy worked at the beginning of February. It was really inspiring. <clears throat> All of the schools are now open for some type of in-person learning. Uh, and I want to emphasize some type. Uh, it was mentioned about the older buildings in the ward. All of the, all of the older buildings in the ward are in not good shape. All of the secondary, the secondary schools, the middle schools and the high schools, all four of them are all new and they're in great shape. But the, uh, as was mentioned about Whittier, Whittier and Truesdale, neither one of them have elevators <clears throat> and that's against the law. And as long as I've been on the state board, which is from December of 2018, I've been bringing that up at every ANC meeting every community meeting for two years and nothing's been done about it. The community has to get behind that and raise our voices. Um, there are food sites now at Powell, Truesdale, LaSalle, Bacchus, Coolidge and Brightwood <clears throat> that offer meals, breakfast and lunch from 10 to 12 on every school day. And they'll be open until the end of uh, this school year and hopefully all summer as they were last summer. Uh, Brightwood and Coolidge also have food deliveries uh, once a week. Uh, the lines are long and everybody gets food and uh, you don't have to have any, you don't even, you don't have to have any identification or anything. You just have to get in line, six feet away from the next person. <clears throat> um, we started the Mrs. O'Leary's Books for Friends again this year. Um, started last week and we're hoping that we can uh, top the 15,000 that we delivered last year in 2021. Oh, I left my information in the chat. 
my phone number and my email address. I picked up another three box of books today from uh, somebody in Ward 4, in 4B as a matter of fact. And uh, Wonderful. I, I hope that everybody, uh, you know, if you've got children and they're older now and they're not gonna read those books, we've got uh, room in the living room to hold them until we deliver them to the schools. And I see what Wonderful. you're saying. And uh, one other thing, <clears throat> today in another meeting I was in at six o'clock, I heard from the council member, uh, Louise George, and she and uh, council member White introduced legislation about having the State Board of Education uh, be, uh, have a voice in the new superintendent of the uh, Office of the State Superintendent. And they have another bill which will allow DCPS uh, members to run for the State Board of Education. If you don't know, it's against the law right now for anyone in DCPS to run for the State Board of Education. But the DC Public Charter Schools people can run for that, which doesn't make sense at all. And I've mentioned that to the mayor and everyone else, and hopefully that, but we need the community to raise its voice about everything because we don't want, we don't want anything about a new normal or anything like that. We don't want to go back to normal with the schools. We want a new reality where everyone is treated the same. And uh, that's got to come from the community. I'll stop. If you have any questions, I'm available. Are there any questions, commissioners? No? OK. Uh, Commissioner Jocelyn, Jocelyn Johnson. That's a quick question. You, are you saying that it's illegal to put an elevator in Whittier and Truesdale? I, I, you just made No, no, it's it's break. illegal. It's illegal not to have an elevator. And it goes against it goes against the ADA, the American for Disabilities Act. As was mentioned, Whittier has students and teachers who need to be able to get out of the building quickly in an emergency, and they don't have an elevator at either Truesdale or Whittier. Thank you for, I, I'm sorry if I was unclear about We're that. Clear. So what did it's they against say? the law for them not to have elevators. So what did they so, say when you bring it up? Let it die? I'm sorry? I'm saying, what do they say when you bring it up? They're just ignoring it? Just Obviously a they're ignoring it because they're not, taking care of it and it's DCPS is the balls in DCPS but the mayor knows about it and the city council knows about it and you know I know that council member George is right on top of it but it's got to it's got to you know there's got to be uh, people raising their voices that's how we'll get things done I agree with Commissioner Palmer what, what Julie Julia Wallham Julia Wallham Wallham saying. Thank you, Frazier, for mentioning this. As you know, we did a resolution a while back um, encouraging Whittier's modernization and raising the elevator issue. And I'm wondering if you have tips or strategies to push for this, given that we've done kind of the ANC resolution side of it already. My, in my view, the only way that anything gets done is to raise, raise hell about it. You know, I, I, I can't, they can't, you can't throw me out. I'm not gonna do anything to get impeached and I'm gonna be raising it for the next four years, that's for sure. And I, but the community has to, we've gotta make, you know, whatever it takes to get things done, I'm all for it. You can come, I would appreciate your coming and testifying in front of the State Board of Education about it. Because believe it or not, even though we don't have any power as far as changing things. The state board, the last, since the pandemic, our state board hearings have gotten unbelievable YouTube numbers. And, and I, you know, as long as it, it gets out, I'd appreciate it. All right, thank you very much. I'm sorry, Commissioner Tiffany Johnson. Hi, Frazier. Um, okay, two things. I have some books for you, first and foremost. Great. I'll come um, to you. Second of all, um, 
in terms of testifying regarding the ADA violations, which is, is a federal offense, um, how do our constituents um, make their concerns known um, in terms of testifying before the State Board of Education? Um, should we be also testifying? As you know, we're, you know, in budget and oversight hearing season. Um, what avenues do you think would be the best approach? Uh, the, the, the performance hearings on DCPS are on the 9th of March. For this, all the school, all the school, the, the OSI and DCPS and the charter school boards, they're all being performance hearings are on the same day, the 9th of March. On the 10th, they have government witnesses. On the 9th, they have uh, uh, public witnesses. I would, I would come and, and let them know. Come to our meeting. We meet on the third Wednesday of the month, the third Wednesday of the month, and anybody can testify about anything, really, that has to do with education. It would really be great to have a panel um, of, of people from Ward 4, even if it's just 4B, that's fine with me. To come and then we then I can ask you those questions, and uh, you can talk about it. But it's 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 a crime, I agree, and it's the only things the only way we get things done. I mean, this has been a last year was a great year with people raising voices, all right. But that's what we need to do. We can't accept what's going on with education in this city right now. There has to be a. So let me. I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm going to ask the last question. I'm sorry. I want to jump in and I want to ask a clarifying question and then we'll we'll end the discussion there um, because we're running over time. But um, is the requirement that there be an elevator or is there a requirement that um, accommodations be met? So in other words, for example, and, and this might be unrealistic, but it's just to give an example, if someone who would normally not be able to take the stairs um, is in a classroom on the first floor, then an accommodation has been made, right? So the, my question for clarity state is, is the requirement that every school have an elevator and, and therefore they are breaking the law or is the requirement that they be accommodated and it's not happening and therefore they're breaking the law? That's a good question that I don't have the answer to, but I, I know from what I've heard, I mean, I know that, they're putting a lift in at Truesdale, mm -hmm. and um, it's not ha it's not making anybody happy because it's not mm -hmm. an elevator. It's hard to put an elevator in a, in an old school. All the new schools have elevators because they're in there. The old the old elevators, and you know I'm a veteran of Cardozo High School, which is over a hundred years old now, but now it's a new Cardozo with a beautiful couple of elevators, but the old elevators were old elevators. And that's what they have in those older schools, especially in Whittier. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it's against the ADA rules. You can't just, you can't say, well, we put anybody in a wheelchair on the first floor, uh, but it's not just people in wheelchairs. So they have to, they have to cover the ADA recommendations. I guess that's my answer. Right. That was just one example though. Right. Okay, um, Tiffany, I'm going to go to Evan first since he has oh, yet to ask okay. a question, and then I'll end with you, okay? okay. You'll be the uh, last question. All right, go ahead. The, the, since the mm -hmm. council member's office is still on here, from a policy perspective, I had supported years ago putting accessibility as a metric for school renovations in the CIP process that they use to determine priorities. And if you're interested in making substantial changes that will elevate these concerns, the council member could support legislation to include that in the score so that ADA inaccessibility would move people up the total school renovation process um, would be part of the things that they assess to determine whether a school needed a renovation or not. Thank That's you for question. that. I, I will pass on that information to uh, the legislative team and council member. Thank you. Okay, uh, council member Tiffany, I'm sorry, council member, wow. That's prophetic, right? Um, Commissioner Tiffany Johnson, you'll be last on this topic. Maybe one day if my daughter allows me. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but just, uh, it, I'm taking off my commissioner hat and putting on my disability rights advocacy hat. Um, Frazier is exactly right. Um, it is a violation of the Americans with Disability Act to not have um, wheelchair accessible features. So the elevators, things of that nature. Um, some buildings have been grandfathered in because they're so old um, that they don't necessarily require those uh, ADA compliant uh, but I don't think Whittier falls into that category. I don't Neither think any of the though. schools fall into that category. Um, and so we need to elevate this to ensure that our city council knows that we have schools that are not ADA compliant. We have children whose lives and, and teachers and staff, for that matter, whose lives are at risk if we don't get into ADA compliance. And there's a certain time limit that, uh, and I can't re recall it off the top of my head, there's a certain time limit for which uh, you come into compliance. So if we thank file you. something, that the, the clock can start. Someone just sent a, um, something about it in the chat. Um, that's where, where my knowledge of taking stuff out of the chat, I don't know how to do that, but, uh, if you could send that to my email, uh, I'd appreciate it, but that's great. Uh, you know, it, it's a real, and I, it, those of you that are on the, have been on the ANC since I was elected, I bring it up every time at an ANC meeting. It's always Whittier and Truesdale. Truesdale and Whittier, Whittier and Truesdale, every single meeting, and nothing's been done about it. And we're not even getting into the roof at Whittier, which they supposedly fixed this summer. And I can't imagine what it's like, because they've been having leaks since, since they went back in the building. Right. And there was an individual who said there's no such thing as being grandfathered in. For businesses, yes. For buildings, yes not for school buildings. Great. Thank you so much. I really okay. appreciate all your questions. Uh, I love having questions. <laughs> I hope I can give it. Right. Thank you. I don't, I think we've covered uh, all the questions in the chat. Commissioner Yates, did we cover all of those? I believe so. Thank you. All right. Thank you, um, Frazier. Captain Porter, you can take yourself off of mute. Okay, you hear me? Yes, I can. Outstanding. Okay, um, we can score. I'm Captain Franklin Porter. I'm basically the fourth district on sector one. I'm captain. I'm gonna go through the uh, stats of uh, most of the crime that occurred in the last 30 days, which in 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 the ANC, which is, looks pretty good. Um, we had 30 less crimes than occurred last year. Um, unfortunately, we had a homicide that did occur in the ANC. That happened on um, the 19th of February, just a few days ago. Uh, I know we spoke about it, someone spoke about it earlier. That happened in the um, sixth town of Black of Chillum, place northeast. Um, individual is shooting in um, shooting someone with a shotgun. The police did arrive on the scene. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, yes, somebody, we can hear you. All right. Somebody ended up shooting someone with a shotgun. Um, the police arrived on the scene and unfortunately had to discharge their firearms at the person and that took effect. So the person was shoot, shot by the police, the suspect, and um, he just survived and was taken to the hospital and basically um, will be charged with the homicide that he occurred before the police arrived. So that is a close case when it comes to a homicide case. Um, we also had two robberies. One robbery occurred in 72 on the back of um, Blair Road, Northwest. That occurred on February 10th. Um, individuals just basically walking down the street, walking down the sidewalk, going home from 7-Eleven, 
and basically a car pulled up, pointed a handgun at him, took, the, um, took his property. Um, the other robbery happened in the um, 100 block of um, Kennedy Street that happened on um, January 31st. And um, that, that, that one occurred basically, a person was leaving the liquor store. And uh, once he got out of the liquor store, someone uh, attacked him and basically took the, um, the part that he bought inside of the store. So both of those cases are still open. And then we also had another assault with a dangerous weapon. And that's a shooting case. That happened on January 21st in the three block of Okathorpe Street, Northwest. That's basically an individual was just walking down the sidewalk and he said he was interacting with the individual that basically seemed like he was having an episode and attacked him. And then subsequently he pulled out a gun and basically shot at him and it, and, um, it hit him in the leg. Um, and the suspect in the queen, that case is still open. So those are all the violent crimes that took place. Um, going through the property crimes, they don't look that bad. Um, we had one burglary. Um, last year at this time we had two, so basically that is down. Um, theft models we had 36. Last year at this time we had 58, so that's down. Um, theft month, um, just regular thefts we had 22. Last year at this time we had 36, so that's down. Now what's up in the ASC area is, is stolen vehicles. I'm, I'm pretty sure I talk about this all the time. Stolen vehicles for some reason through the entire city is up. Stolen vehicles are occurring basically by way of people leaving their vehicles running. Um, I'm trying to get the word out basically to do not leave your vehicles running. It, even if it's for a second, if you run into a store or whatever the case may be, for some reason they, they're going around, a lot of suspects are going around looking for vehicles running. They seem that that's the easier way to steal the vehicle. So we had 10 stolen autos in the um, in the ANC area, and the majority of them are by people leaving their vehicles running. Last year at this time, we had six, so that tells you the increase we had. And that's pretty much a trend that's going around in the entire city. So um, I'm trying to get the word out, so if you can pretty much talk to your neighbors and talk about that. Don't leave your vehicles running. That's what the suspects are looking for, because it's the easier way. Now with the newer vehicles, it's a little hard to hot wire the cars and basically getting the vehicle. So the basis, it, it, it's, it's a little easier to just drive around and look for somebody leaving their vehicles running. You know, when you pull up and you put your flashes on, and you, you leave your vehicle running, you go into the store, you, you're basically just putting okay. putting it out um, a notice that you got your vehicles running. Because when the flashes are on, everybody pretty much knows, okay, your vehicles are running, and that's the notice that comes to your car. So basically, make sure you uh, put that, that word out. Other than that, that's pretty much all that's going on in the crime. I, I, I look at the stats going on the last three days, and I see good things coming through the ANC. I just want to, I'm concerned with the uh, stolen vehicles. Other than that, everything looking good. And that's it. Thank you. I gave you about three extra minutes because I knew people were going to have questions about the shooting. Um, so I'll take questions from the commissioners, and then we'll move to the chat and the uh, Q&A. Commissioner Johnson, Tiffany Johnson. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Uh, Captain Porter, uh, the shooting that occurred in the uh, 300 block of Oglethorpe Street, uh, which is literally about down the street from my house, literally, like, a two minute walk. Um, I was told that uh, the story that the person gave was inconsistent with uh, what the forensics were. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? And how should I um, ensure my constituents that this is not going to happen again? Well, uh the story, I mean, pretty much a lot of people that give stories when they get shot or when they get robbed, obviously, we can't, we, we got to take it with a grain of salt. Obviously, sometimes people put themselves in situations where they don't want to tell the, the whole truth. Um, his story was a little consistent. I was on the scene of that, matter of fact. His story was somewhat understanding. 
of what happened. He basically said he was um, just walking down the street. This, he interacted with somebody that was being, was doing stuff un, uh, was unusual. And basically just saying to him, you know, my sister got shot. What are you doing? So I, I think the situation wasn't specifically targeted to him. I think the person that shot him was having um, a moment, you would say. So I don't think that's um, where this situation will have to worry about, you know, this happening again. It's possible, but unlikely that someone's out there shooting someone in, the, in, in that particular area. I think someone was having some type of mental issue, but I don't think the victim in reference to this had anything to do with what happened. So. Okay, thank you for that. Because I just want to lay the the residents' uh, concerns because we have a lot right. of citizens that reside on that in that immediate area. Right, I understand. Okay. All right. Um, are there any other questions before we move to the chat? No. Commissioner Yates. Yes, Scott Knickerbocker from the Q&A. If there's time after coming forward, the news has been reporting an increase in anti-Asian violence across the U.S. after January 6th. Does the captain have any information to share about occurrences in 4D or D.C. in general? That's a negative. I don't see any um, basically trend that's leading into um, violence when it comes to the elderly. Um, Obviously, the city, when it comes to the city-wise, I don't look too much at the stats when it comes to the city. I try to try to basically keep up, up, up with anything that's going on, but I don't see anything in the fourth district that's coming with it when it comes to bias specifically towards the um, elderly community. From, okay, from the chat, there were two incidents yesterday of dangerous driving the 700 block of Kennedy Street Northeast and New Hampshire Avenue above Grant Circle. Has MPD made arrests and charged the offenders? No, I, I, I don't have any. Obviously, was that the north, Northwest or the Northeast side? Northwest. North. So it's not actually inside of 4B. I think that's 4D. Yeah, that's for D. That's for D area. However, but I, I don't. We we have not made any arrests when it comes to um obviously aggressive driving. Usually, aggressive driving leads to like tickets. It doesn't really lead to uh, arrest. However, Kennedy Street. We basically I got I got details up around Kennedy Street because of the violence that was, that occurred there. But um but obviously aggressive driving that will lead to a ticket. That that probably would not lead to an arrest. And let me let me correct myself. That was in 700 block of Kennedy Street Northeast. I said Northwest. Uh, I'm sorry. So it's not 4D. It's 4B. Okay, not a problem. What I'll do is I'll shoot out an email to, uh, to the officers that um, that work in that area. But the same thing. Most aggressive drivers usually lead to um, to tickets, not arrests. Obviously, but if it's if it's intoxicated driver, then it will lead to arrest. But most 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 of them lead to tickets. This, this actually spurred a memory for me, Captain Porter. Do you have an update on the death of Timothy Abbott in June 2020 in 4B01? Um, as far as I know, there have been no charges in that case, and he was killed by a driver while in the crosswalk at Piney Branch and Dahlia. I do not. I do not. Well, I might do. I might have a little bit to it. If you can shoot me an email, I put my email in the chat. Um, that can remind me on it. I'll look into it and I can definitely respond back to the email about any um, updates on that. I believe I emailed after the November meeting on it and there were no charges still. I was just wondering if there's there's a, what's taken so long in short. Was that, was that the pedestrian that was struck? Yes, yes I, I, I might have emailed you on that. That, um, yeah, that um, basically uh, 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 basically uh, a department that um, investigate um, major crashes and stuff. They have, you know, determined that there was not. They basically determined there was no, not going to be any charges. And it was up to the U.S. Attorney. The U.S. Attorneys have not determined there's not going to be any charges. I know. I can reach out to them again and see if they have reconsidered anything. But right now, there's not going to be any charges on that case. So he was killed in the crosswalk, and there's not going to be any charges for the driver. Not that I know of. I, I, like I said, I'll reach out 
and follow up with you as attorney to see if they have come up with anything. But well, what's happened with that is our major crash. They do an investigation and they basically they basically they basically do um, their investigation and they follow up with you as attorneys. Once they give everything to your attorneys, it's on that department, on that agency to basically decide if they're gonna do any charges. As of right now, there was no charge when, when I emailed you. I'll follow up and see if anything has come up not since then. I mean, that's disappointing to hear about the death of a 21-year-old boy, essentially, in my SMB, right. and that, that the, like, who was obeying the law, who was crossing the crosswalk, and there's going to be essentially no consequences for the person who killed him. Well, let's, let's follow up on it and see exactly why. There could be a reason why there's not any charges, but we would definitely, we would definitely find out why. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. I don't see any question, any other questions. So um, thank you very much, Captain Porter, and we look forward to hearing from you again next month. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Um, next up would be Housing Justice Committee. I don't think that Chris is here to provide the update, so I can provide it briefly as chair of the committee. Um, just one second. So the Housing Justice Committee met most recently on Monday, February 8th. Um, for those who aren't familiar, it's a five member committee to address uh, affordable housing and homelessness issues. And during this meeting, we heard from commissioners and other board four commissions about their work on affordable housing, um, including Jonah Goodman in 4C and Lisa Gore in 3-4G. Um, who talked about some of their work on um, zoning guidelines and um, with regard to 3-4-G, they have a task force on racism and a housing subgroup that issued a report with some recommendations. So we heard from them and learned some ideas and best practices. Okay, well, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? No. Nope. Wonderful, we'll move on. We have three presentations lined up. I know that two out of the three are, I can see them as an attendee. If Susan Davis is here, I need to be um, made aware. I don't see her name listed as an attendee. So we will move on to Gerard Brown, the program manager with the District Department of Health Road and Control. Just Susan Davis, if you're on the phone, you can hit star nine to raise your hand. Good evening. Thank you for that. Good evening. Yes. The floor uh, is yours. You have 10 minutes thank you. To, to tell people all about what they need to be doing to help reduce the rodent population in 4B. Yes. So um, our team during the pandemic um, actually worked almost entirely. Um, I think we let, let them be off for about 30 days. Other than that, they have been working, responding to 311 complaints, doing inspections, um, social distancing, and all of that. But the, the, the thing is, rats now are desperate and unpredictable. And I, I, you probably notice if you go through the city, you know, you'll see um, residential trash cans mostly overflowing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's not because people behave bad. That's just because we have changed our eating habits. You know, the Uber Eats and Grubhub, you know, we get a lot of food. And then we throw those containers away. Um, and, and the best thing you can do is wash those containers out before you put them in a trash can and um, try to put the trash out closest to the time it's gonna get picked up. You know, that's what I do. I leave my trash in the trash bag because um, my trash be, overflows too because our eating habits have changed too. You know, so um, do those things so the trash lid can close tight. You know, um, rats need three things. They need food, water, and a place to live. And humans provide that. And the, the food sources most mainly our trash. 
you know, our food waste. So um, usually when you see rats, you see a trash problem, you know. So um, we, we still do petitions. That means someone can get your neighbors to sign a, a permission form, actually, and I, we will schedule a time to come out and do an inspection on all the properties that actually sign the petition because we really want permission to go on somebody's yard and unless they are not responding and it's a health hazard, then we'll take some kind of action. But um, the petition is good because sometimes you might see rats in your yard and they actually live three or four houses down. You know, so it's best for us to get in all like yards, you know, and do a thorough inspection to try to find the rat burrows. Cause we, we don't use um, the bait boxes, you black boxes you see in people's yards sometimes. We actually use tracking powder and we apply the tracking powder directly into the rat burrow. So we have to find the rat burrow to apply. And the tracking powder gets on the rat's fur and when they groom themselves, they ingest the powder and the poison and it kills them, you know, within 10 to 12 days. So it's the, 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 the best way to, to solve room problem is for us to do an inspection on as many properties as possible. And we need the community, the commissioners, the residents that Anybody that can work with us to do that, we, we, we try to create partnerships, you know, um, and, and, and like blocks, you know. It's, so you think that we are only working for you, right, Commissioner? <laughs> but we, we um, it's citywide. We have 18 <coughs> pest controllers. The mayor just recently gave us an increase in funding so we added new staff, new vehicles. We have, uh, we can respond in to a complaint within 24 hours or almost immediately because we have uh, handheld devices that we can access 311 complaints when we're in the field. And so they can address those complaints while they're in the field. And they have uh, cell phones that they can call you and let you know to get, um, additional information that you know that we're coming, you know, so you will be aware. Um, and sometimes it's nice to meet people in the yard, in the alley, and you can show us what you see, you know, because rats do not want to be found. So a lot of times they hide very well, but if we can get an idea of where they're running, we get a good idea of where to look. Is that my 10 minutes? <laughs> Not even, that was fine, but I think you covered much of what we were interested in having you talk about. And I really didn't know that you did work with other people. I just thought you, you know, were available for me. So yes. I guess I do have to share you, LaRoya and a couple of other people. So um, yes, let me yes, start. You on it. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. Let me start by saying that before you were able to join us, we had a resident speak to the fact that her neighbor has um, a duck and a chicken and a rooster and a lot of rats now <laughs> because of that. And so she was looking for some help in addressing that issue. <coughs> so is that something, excuse me, that you can help to address? Uh, short answer is yes. Um, all of those animals that you mentioned are illegal. You only have uh, cats and dogs in D.C. You know, you, you can't, they, they try to get chickens legal, but I, I don't think that works. But, um, so all that's illegal. Um, in the health department is animal services. Um, they oversee the humane society. I mean, the uh, animal control on New York Avenue. So we work with them. Uh -huh. So if, if I had the address, I could probably get uh, one of the animal control investigators to go do an inspection. I'll email it to you. Okay. The, I'll email the address. Actually, she's here. Kimberly, can you unmute yourself? If you're comfortable providing your address now, that's fine. Otherwise, you can uh, do it another time. Well, send an email, then, then you should be in the loop, um, or you can be in the loop, see, you know, 
uh, who I communicate with and what they want to do. Yeah, I'm sorry. Gordon would have to make, I guess, a panelist for her to be able to speak. There you go. Kimberly, unmute yourself, please. There you go. Yeah, good evening. Um, you want my address or the address of the the people with the farm animals? The animals address. Okay, it's one McDonald Place Northeast. McDonald? Yes. Place Northeast. Okay. And I are you sure that it's illegal? Because when I looked yeah. into it, um, it didn't say it was the the laws for this were real loosey goosey. It didn't it, it read like it's not inclined for people to have it, but it wasn't anything officially strong to say that it was illegal either. So so name those animals again. They have a rooster, um, some ducks, uh, I believe a hen, and chickens. And, yeah, and I believe most of those are illegal. Well, okay. I understand, and I don't know for sure, but my last understanding was the only animals that were legal in D.C. were dogs and cats. Okay. Um, Thank you, sir. Again, I had an experience okay. with that in my SMD. And so a resident um, in one of the blocks um, had ducks, and they had some other farm animal. And so the resident reached out to me to find out if it was um, legal and it was not. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I think they went a step further in that they were actually um, using the animals for human consumption. So they were slaughtering the animals oh. and, and going a step further and leaving the crates outside. So I did involve Department of Health ECRA, I believe, and I was told at that time that it was illegal. Um, but it'd be interesting to find out um, what your case looks like. Um, but they were able to come out right away. I reached out to Gerard. He got the folks over to that home. Um, and I think mm -hmm. it may have been a culture thing. I'm not quite sure, but it was resolved. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Tiffany Johnson. Uh, just in in reading the regulations, it looks like and and Kimberly uh, Conkle, thank you, Kimberly, one of my constituents, also uh, posted an article in the chat box um, from Potville. Um, but in reading the regulations, it looks like chickens are allowed um, as pets, mm -hmm. uh, but ducks and uh, other two-legged creatures, whatever you want to call them, um, are not permissible. It looks like we are allowed to to have chickens in our backyard. So chickens, roosters are fine. Um, obviously, the same rules apply in terms of, you know, cleaning up after them, their feces and everything. Um, and if they are slaughtering the animals, I have to look up the regulations on that, but if they're raising the animals for the purpose of like a religious ceremony like Santeria or something like that, it may be permissible. Um, I don't like it, but it might be, and I have to do a little but bit more research on that. Yeah, from what I understand, it's not that simple and straightforward, though, because there are a lot of rules in terms of how the animals are housed and everything else. They there can't is, just have farm animals in their backyard. Yeah, there is. You know? there is. So, it, um, it, you have to have basically kind of like a mini farm. So yeah. There has to be like, so, you know, the, the chicken house, you have to have a, enough space for them to wander and all of that. So there's a lot of other things that go into it. You can't just have a chicken for chicken's sake. So I'm, I'm going to find out from, from the team at uh, DC Health Animal Services and I'll email you, um, Commissioner Brooks, and, and the email you sent me and let you know what I find. Thank you. Thank you, I'd appreciate it. Um, so I don't think there are any other questions from the chat or the, uh, 
Q and A. So, yes. um, Evan, do you have? I'm going to go in numerical order. Evan, do you have any questions? <laughs> no, ma'am. Council, um, Commissioner Palmer, Commissioner Yates, Commissioner Palmer, Commissioner Jocelyn Johnson. Yes, thank you. I was hoping not to get overlooked. I have a question, and mine is totally in a different area from you or a different direction. Um, does the rat department or vector or wherever, whatever your area is, are you working with sanitation? Because one of the biggest things that I see that has been plaguing me for years is the litter that sanitation leaves behind when they do trash collection on a weekly basis from the trash that spills out of the cans as they dump the can into the truck. Now, it's kind of hard to take trash and uh, this whole thing with rats serious if the district doesn't do everything the district can do to address these rats. This is something that the district doesn't do on a regular. I, we had our trash picked up yesterday. Well, no, well, today's Monday. Yeah, today's Monday. I was floored to see the trash in the alley today, this morning, and they came late because of the snow. It's almost like a regular occurrence. It's Thanksgiving every Monday in my area, just from the trash that the, the sanitation leaves. So what do you all do about that? Or is that even on anybody's radar screen? It is, but it's, it's, it's a challenge to, to yeah. with because um, the, the rule for putting trash out for collection is that you put it in a trash bag, a heavy duty plastic trash bag, and you put it in the can. And some people don't do that. They put the trash in paper bags and, and things like that. When the trash is collected, then it spills all over the alley. Now, they I just leave it. Yeah, so now I, I'm not, I don't, I don't manage um, the, the sanitation DPW. I work with them, you know, um, and they have a sweep in, inspectors in each ward that you can work with. Um, I think they have two or three in each ward on the solid waste education and enforcement. And they have more residential enforcement um, than DOH for, uh, for litter. Because the, the rule is that each one of us has to keep the front of our house clean 18 inches from the curb in the rear to the middle of the alley. That's our responsibility. Now, if there's, you, you know, um, that that's a, a ticket. You can get a ticket for- Well, well, you know what? I hate to cut you off, but before you even go through all that, the trash guys looking at them out the window most of the things. And if they litter as they are picking the can up and it spills out or whatever, they just walk past it and keep, and keep on moving. What? Who goes but, behind but, them? Something needs to be done. And I would just like to finish. I would just like to finish before you cut me off so just let everybody else talk. I just want to make sure that that's on somebody's I'm going to cut screen. you off to to your question, which I can do. But I know. <laughs> not He's not DOH. I mean, he's not Depart Department of Public work, work. So can he answer your question? Is what is what? I was well, what I'm all I'm asking him is the connection to the connection because this isn't something that just popped up. This isn't something that just is just some new freak that just happened. This has been going on for years and years and years. So I know that your area has to know about it, and it would seem to me that the district can merge, can work together. And trying to resolve at least that part. That's the that's all I'm trying to do. So the, short somebody is yes. the short answer is yes. We we can work together with DPW and we do. Um so that's the short right. answer. The, the, the long answer is a challenge and, and it's a, the thing about getting people to change their behavior. You know, whether it's a city um employee or a resident, you know, mm -hmm. get people to change their behavior. Right. And, we, and I, I just recommend that if you see something like that, that they call 311 and report. I don't know if you already did, but you get a, um, a record of that, then you have something um, to fall back on. It's going to testify. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, does anyone else have a question? Go ahead. We have the Q&A is all I was raising my hand for. I just want to okay. make sure. You want me to read it? Go ahead. 
Adele yeah. Danzler, if the trash can on third is the trash can on third in Oglethorpe maintained by NPS or DC? If DC, can the rat burrows around the trash can be addressed? I, I didn't hear the first part. The trash can at third in Oglethorpe is that DC property or NPS property? And if it's DC property, can the rat burrows there be addressed? Yes. I, I mean, if we know about it, just let us know. If you can send me an email or you can call 311. Um, then where, wherever rats are is a concern to us. So just the litter can we're talking about? I, I assume it's one of the yeah. triangle parks. Yeah, so I'm in that. Um, I'm in that. Council member Tiffany. Uh, I said it again, Tiffany. Commissioner Tiffany Johnson go next because I think she's going to talk about Third North Park. Um, am I right? Yes, I am. Um, so we have. It is a DPW issue um, that I've I've verified uh, is not NPS property. The NPS is just Fort Slocum. So the the wooded and and tree area, uh, I've put in three one one requests for oh god I don't know the better part of a year trying to get uh, the trash can uh, emptied because people are using it as their personal uh, garbage disposal system instead of you know just putting out there. Uh, trash in the normal course. Um, I will also reach out to Mr. Brown. I did not realize because I haven't been, I've driven past it, but I haven't been there to physically look at it. Um, I will reach out to Mr. Brown to make sure that those mouse uh, traps, or excuse me, the, those mouse burrows are, are taken rats. care of. Well, rat, rat burrows, <laughs> rat. Rat burrows. I, I know. It, it just gives just me the email GBs. with the location of reminder, and, and I have somebody go out there tomorrow. It's uh, at the corner of Third and Oglethorpe, Third Street and Oglethorpe. Northwest. Yes, Northwest. You you can't miss it. I'm sure there's probably stuff up there now. Okay, I'll send somebody tomorrow. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. If you could just email me, Jared, and let me know what their findings are. Because I, I, in the past, we've seen uh, rat burrows um, and had an assessment, but that was over a year and a half ago. So if they're coming back, I, I want to get it ameliorated as soon as possible. And thank you for whoever asked that question. Um, Madam Chair, can I say something? Madam Chair, yeah. can I say yeah. something very quickly? Yeah. Um, Mr. Brown, uh, while you're looking into that, look at 9th and Madison Street right there on the corner. Um, I don't know how often DPW emptied empty the corner trash cans for everyone, I mean, for the city. But uh, as Tiffany was saying that people are using those trash cans for their home trash. Um, I, you know, maybe this is something that um, uh, you all can look into with the city about picking up trash cans on the corners, maybe three or four times a week, uh, because I know within my neighborhood, uh, the trash, those trash cans are being overused. They are not just for, for, for trash with people walking. But um, when I leave to go to work uh, at, uh, well, I'm working at home now, but when I leave out of my house at 515 and in three minutes, I'm at the corner of 9th and uh, Madison Street Northwest, uh, I see ladies always putting their home trash in that trash can. And, you know, we have rodents. But it's not only coming from the people houses trash, but they are coming from the city trash. So this is something that I think Department of Health need to look into with DPW about picking up trash more often because our city is completely filthy now. Uh, we have a clean sweep program. Uh, 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 they created another agency or whatever, and we have more trash, but we're giving out more money. And I like to know why. So the, the thing is, when, when people put um, household trash in city litter cans, that's illegal dumping. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and you can you can work with the sweep because um, I'm not with DPW, but I know you can work with sweep and they're sending the solid waste inspector. And sometimes they go through the trash and try to identify who's putting it in there mm. and that person a ticket. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you, Mr. Brown. I have I have been that route before, and all I got told was untruth, totally untruth. There is no faith in me with PDW right now on this trash issue. Um, I can talk to you offline about that, um, and and I and I will speak to the director on this. Um, you 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 don't get truth from DPW. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello, hello. Okay, and, and another thing that's happening is you, you might notice that a lot of city litter cans on the corner are overflowing. Yes. I believe a lot of um, the, the drivers that pick up the trash, because they pick up the trash every night from litter cans, but happen on snow detail and the things are getting backed up a little bit. Okay, mm -hmm. if they, okay, uh, Mr. Brown, if they pick up trash every night, uh, no uh, when I no hit way. that corner no at way. 9th and Madison, that trash can is overflowing. They're not putting it in that quickly. No, that's not true. I mean, because I used to have a trash can on my corner, and I and I had to uh, really, uh, I had to go to uh, the mayor to get it moved because of uh, uh, trash being dumped from Virginia cars, Maryland cars, DC cars. Everybody was dumping their trash, and it got to the point that dog poop was so bad to Rex was coming out like, you know, hey guys, we got a home. And so, you know, I had to go to the mayor office to get the trash can removed. And it took me a long time, but I finally got it removed. But this is not fair to the homeowners that pay taxes. And I know that there is a law that can be written about this. I know there's paperwork that can be said to each home about this. And every time we bring it up, I feel as though we're getting a pacifier that no one actually can suck. So how I can help <laughs> is, is we, we I, the way I can help is we, we yes. can deal with it one, one can at a time, you know, because I can't change regulations. I understand. So, could, I, so could I add something? Could I add something? Uh, yes. So Tamira Benitez again. Uh, this is something that we have quickly in the six weeks that we have been in office, we have encountered. There's actually a lot of data from last year's 311 that can tell us what, which are the issue uh, litter cans, and obviously you know which ones are those. So one of the things that I'm trying to, to do right now is try to get in contact with some of DPW to provide me with educational material. So yeah, you can go door, door to door in the neighborhoods where this, uh, uh, very uh, like overflowing trash cans are and have conversations with people on the weekends, at, at night, whenever it is, just go out and just talk to people because this, aside from the enforcement, it is an education uh, piece. And, uh, you know, I'm talking to some community leaders and I hope that, you know, and I know for sure that the agency commissioners uh, like yourselves active uh, will uh, be willing to go out with us as well and just have conversations with people about changing these habits because it is a habit that needs to be uh, fixed and definitely agency support is needed, but also it's community community education that needs to happen. Hi, um, this thank is, you. This is oh, the mentioner. I believe you had a question. All right, so thank you very much. Um, um, I know in my SMD, uh, Gerard Brown, DPW, and DCRA have vigilantly worked in, a, in, in my SMD. And so what I've done is we do um, cleanups. We, uh, I have block captains. I've worked with Julie Lawson. I've worked with several different um, pieces to work on the public space can, if you see it. You know, it's not a problem for a resident to call it in or let me know if I see it, I call it in. We've also identified a van that was dropping off bulk trash, illegal dumping at the cans. And so, you know, I think, like you said, the education piece, I do have information that we share. Um, we were supposed to have had uh, Department of Health to come out the last two weeks on a Friday, but the snow came, but they did come out when we saw the barrels. But I can say that uh, Gerard's team is very responsive. Talk to neighbors about, you know, educating them about their dogs. They didn't realize that dog feces also draws rodents. 
Um, and so educating, of course, is the key. But also what I've done is I have block captains. And Ms. Mack is one of our diligent block captains. And we work together in different blocks to identify holes in trash cans. Because we've got holes in trash cans. Um, we work to try to get the cash, trash cans replaced or lids off your cans. We try to work to identify those, you know, by letting your neighbors know they need to take down the number of the can. Sometimes the cans don't even belong to that resident, but you don't know because when the trash comes, they put the trash cans out. They don't mark the address on it. And so it's not even their trash can, but collectively, if, you know, the, the, the community has to take some responsibility in, like you said, letting people know, having block captains assigned. Uh, we've got some young kids that walk a pit bull. They, you know, you see the kid leave the dog poop, identify it. I've knocked on doors to say, hi, this, I'm LaRoy Hump, your A and C, your dog is identified. Um, so it's just a lot of a lot of moving pieces to try to help. Um, I don't know that we'll ever be rid of rodents but to decrease it. And when you see these barrels, they build tunnels under these sheds. Some residents won't let you in their yard. So it, 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 it's a lot of pieces that go with this. So um, I just think that, like you said, the educating people, trying to get people to open their yards. Um, to, they know they've got these abandoned cars in it where rodents are leaving big you know, turds underneath it. Um, but it, it, it is a continual, continual thing. But maybe working with some block captains may help because as ANC commissioners, we can't see everything. We don't live on every block. Um, so engaging the community and working with our council members office and these agencies to come up with some solutions. Thanks. Thank you. Let's end with Julie Lawson. Hi, so my dog is now barking. He's, that's how he does it. Um, so um, I wanted, I, so I spoke about Whittier earlier, but I also want to make sure. Hi, Gerard. Um, I am the, <laughs> I'm the director of the mayor's office of the Clean City. So I run all of the mayor's community engagement around public realm. Um, I coordinate across all the agencies. I have a wonderful relationship with Gerard and with uh, Mr. May who runs sanitation enforcement. Um, so I'm happy if you have concerns about a specific can or rodent burrows or pet waste, please email my office at cleancity@dc.gov. I can't promise tomorrow that we will fix it. As Mr. Brown said, this is a, um, behavior change issue and we're doing a lot to try to change behavior across the district. Um, but um, you can work with our office to get cleanup supplies, to identify your rodent problems and get a block wide petition to get pet waste education in place. Um, please, the email address is cleancity at dc.gov. Um, I know that you guys have a really big agenda still ahead. So I would like to help as much as I can to solve as many of these issues as possible. I also work with all the federal agencies, including National Park Service, um, to try to solve interjurisdictional issues as well. Um, so I'm happy to be your neighbor and I'm happy to hear all this engagement. Um, we don't move forward without this engagement um, and complaints are because you love your city. So. Um, thanks for all of your feedback tonight, and I'm happy to help both you all solve your problems and help the commission move forward on its agenda. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Jamal. to come out. I appreciate it. Tamara, Tamara, is more for? Yes, I'm here. Mm -hmm. If you send me an email, I can give you some rodent control information and flyers. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, we'll move on on the agenda to uh, the next presentation, which is Sarah Molina, Program Analyst, Community Engagement, District Department of Transportation. Hello. Um, Hello. Mr. Brown said that he had five minutes left. I was like, yes, I can take that five minutes. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> no. Nope. Um, I am gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna quickly share uh, my screen. Um, 
I have a, pre a presentation, but I'm going to quickly just go over it. Can, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, so I'm here from the Department of Transportation, Sarah Molina, I'm the Ward 4 um, Community Engagement per uh, Specialist. Um, and so um, here are some of the accomplishments that we did um, over uh, 2020, but I'm not going to go over that uh, too much. Um, specifically for Ward 4, uh, we paved over 26 miles of road, 10 miles of sidewalks, and we've done um, over 126 alleys since the start of Alley Palooza in 2015. Um, we've also completed a few um, projects, including um, Fourth and Blair and Cedar, which is in the uh, within your uh, ANC, which was a huge thing. Um, and then the other ones kind of fall outside of your ANC. But I'm going to send this over to you guys so you have a, more time to uh, review. Um, so uh, during COVID, we did a couple of uh, things um, such as um, the care uh, car free lanes, bus priority projects in a couple of areas uh, within the city. Um, and we also did a uh, slow streets, uh, which were mentioned earlier. Um, uh, the, the one in uh, ANC uh, 4B is in um, Van Buren. Um, and, and so we were happy to uh, go ahead and install the, that slow streets um, um, in ANC 4B. Um, so some of the resources that are happening right now, if you have uh, some opinions um, or, or some comments in regards to our um, transportation plans, uh, we have our Move DC um, uh, program where you can provide feedback um, on what kind of um, projects you would like us to um, uh, prioritize um, or transportation needs um, that you uh, feel like your community needs, uh, please uh, utilize the Move DC uh, program uh, to provide those comments. Um, I'm going to put all of this uh, information on in the chat too, so you guys have the links in, in regards to where uh, to find information about these programs. Um, here's a complete um, a complete uh, just overview of services that we provide. Um, we are a large uh, agency and a lot of divisions um, because we oversee everything that is um, public streets uh, or public space. Um, and so we have the Vision Zero under our safety infrastructure assets, which includes road sidewalks and alleys. Um, then of course, like the Move DC as, as, as I um, shared, which, which includes uh, DC Circulator, DC Streetcars, Capital Bike Shares, um, and dockless scooters and, and, and all that. Um, also quality of life, such as urban forestry, um, street trees and public lands. Um, and then we have like the public space and curbside management, which is uh, permits and also uh, uh, just like overall parking. Um, and then uh, a lot of our services are tied in with 311. Um, so I, I, one big thing for me, uh, any, anytime you engage with me, I'm always gonna say, uh, mm -hmm. do you have a 311 service request? Because that is the best way, uh, one, um, to uh, submit any services that you'd like to bring to our attention. Um, and two, um, is the best way to be able to track the case down. Mm -hmm. And uh, three, is the best way to hold the agency accountable. Um, and so um, some of the services that we have, um, we have the SLAs um, right here on the screen. And again, I'm going to share this, but this is also on the 311. When you click 311 and you click the specific service, it provides you the SLA. Due to COVID, we are a little bit behind on, on some of the services and you might see a few delays on the SLA, um, but we ask for your patience and we are working um, to get some of that, 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 spe that specific work for you. Um, and then one um, thing that I want to bring to your attention because spring, hopefully, um, we don't get no more snow. Um, I'm tired. I'm working. I've been working snow duty. Um, and so um, once the snow uh, season is over and we begin spring, we will launch our Pay DC website, which is essential because you can um, see in this website um, what streets, alleys, and sidewalks, and even markings where we'll be doing during our pavement plan for 2021. Um, and so I highly, highly encourage you um, to uh, look at this map. 
um, to see if any of your uh, streets, uh, sidewalks or alleys are being um, rehabilitated so that uh, one, you're ready in case uh, parking may be impacted. Um, but we do provide, a, we do um, install signs 72 hours prior. But again, I would highly uh, recommend that you um, uh, look at this website. We also have, we, uh, the alley uh, rehabilitation list comes out every quarter. Um, and so the, the, the one that we already began, um, which it would be Ali Palooza, uh, like 10 or 11, I think, um, that is already in the system and we've been working on those. Um, so you can see all of that on our PayBC website. And then um, I know there are a, a few concerns about traffic safety assessments. I just want to go over the process real quick and then I promise I'll be done. Um, for uh, stop sign requests, speed, uh, let me, uh, I would say for stop sign requests, um, cameras or other traffic safety concerns, uh, we do require a full TSA questionnaire to be filled out. Um, you will have to get uh, a signature from the ANC and then uh, it's sent over to us. And then I engage with the ANC to get that approval. And then uh, we get that going. But again, because of um, COVID, we are delayed on um, TSA processes um, because our, our contractor, um, the, the, the one that collects data for us are not collecting data due to uh, COVID um, and safety. And also because um, traffic is just not uh, the same. And so a lot of like stop sign requests and cameras need to be warranted um, in order for us to install. But for speed humps request, if the speed humps is for a local street, what you can do is work with your ANC commissioner to pass um, a resolution, which this, uh, I have a couple already from this ANC that um, we uh, have lined up for the spring. That's when we start again, um, speed hump installations because we don't do it over the uh, winter time. Um, and so if you have, uh, if you are interested in um, any speed humps that have not been requested yet, um, please work uh, with your ANC commissioners and. And, and, and this ANC is great at knowing um, the process and following the process. Um, my contact information um, is um, there. I would I'd say don't use my office number because I'm not in the office. I'm, I am, I'm working from not space, but home. Um, I, my, the best contact number is my cell phone number and then my email. Um, so just uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, um, I, I, and specifically for this meeting, I just wanted to kind of like introduce myself and uh, so for you to get acquainted with me and you have my information. Um, and if I can't answer any, any specific questions about specific projects or specific matters, um, you have my contact information here and I'll put it on the chat so that um, you can just go ahead and, and email me directly. That is it, did I make five minutes? No. No, but you tried to be hard. Let's <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. just <laughs> uh, go in numerical order. Uh, commissioners, <laughs> Jay, do you have any questions? Not at this time, no. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Palmer. Thank you. I don't have a question. I just wanted to publicly thank Syra for all of her help. Um, and just being very responsive and doing a lot of work because we have had a significant amount of meetings and efforts as a commission that have involved DDOT. So thank you, Syrah. No, nope, thank you guys. You guys are, uh, don't tell the other ANCs, but you guys are <laughs> favorite. <laughs> uh, I actually always use uh, you guys as an example, my my example ANC as a, a, a like I how I engage. Uh, so they're like, we want to be like ANC 4B. And I'm like, we will get there. <laughs> oh, okay, 4B03. I, I will be in touch with you because we have some uh, bumps, you know, that we need to do and I need to learn how to do that. But I was just wondering, um, for the Third Street by Coolidge has been an obstacle course for years, years. And do you, does your office just kind of do scans over the city to just see where needs are needed, where repairs are needed, or you just wait, you don't do it until somebody calls, because yeah, that so calls. Yeah, great question. Um, it, it, this is in regards to uh, pavement, right? Yeah, potholes and yeah. patching and all that, because it's a mess, and it yeah. has been a mess forever. Yeah. So I was just I was gonna ask that. 
Yeah, so definitely we do use uh, data uh, collections such as like 301 service requests that do come in um, to determine which roads need to be rehabilitated. And then we go out and assess uh, the need. Um, and so during the winter uh, seasons, we don't do uh, a road repavement because of the temperature. Um, and so we do a lot of the uh, investigations during the, the winter and then we get ready uh, by the springtime to launch our pavement plan. But um, if you have a specific block, what you can do is send it over to me um, and then I can look in the system to see if we either have it as a priority um, if we've inspected it before and um, what if I can provide any interim solutions and um, what are the next steps that I can provide um, so that we can um, get those concerns addressed for you. Well, my question was, was not about the snow. This third street has been bad for years. So this is, this is just get bad now. So was bad last summer. Did any, you only operate when someone gives you a complaint or does your office go out and scan the areas just to see where holes are or whatever? You need to have a, you need to have a complaint to drive you all. Is that, that's my question. Because yeah. no one obviously has ever made a complaint about Third Street. From yeah. Whittier to, Sh to uh, Sheridan, I guess. Yes. Um, so as previously stated, I, I stated that we do uh, provide, we do look at data to determine the need. Um, and by data, I mean like 311 service requests. We look at uh, what 301 service requests have come in um, to determine the need of the road. Um, so uh, if uh, no complaints have been made to 311 or uh, by email or something to our, to, to bring to, to bring it to our attention, then um, most likely we have not evaluated it. And that's why I said, uh, send me uh, the information via email and then I can take a look to see um, if we have any requests, if we have any data in regards to the specific block. Gotcha. Thank you. No problem. Uh, any, any other questions? 4B04? No. Okay, 4B06? No questions at this time, but uh, Sarah, you know, I I'm, will follow up with you later. Yes. Commissioner Bromagen, do you have any questions? Uh, no, not for tonight. Um, not for tonight's meeting. Thanks. Okay, Commissioner Hoff. So I do. Um, what is the turnaround now, Sarah? Good to see you as well, and thank you so much for all that you do. Um, the turnaround for handicapped parking. So I know there's the process where your person comes out to take a look at whether or not it warrants is it. Um, is that in function right now? Like if I put in um, a resident has a handicapped parking request for the sign. And so what would that look like? Do you have people that go out to do the assessments at this time or no during COVID? Yes, um, great question. We do have um, individuals and staff members that do go out um, and evaluate it, but they, but it's not an everyday thing that they go out. Um, mm -hmm. So you might again see one, like a few delays on okay. the SLA, but we are trying our hardest to just, uh, you know, continue to provide services during this pandemic uh, to all residents um, because we understand the need. Um, so yes, I would highly encourage you to, you know, continue to submit your 311 service request and um, just make sure that, um, you know, to best manage your expectations, I don't want to tell you that, you know, we're going to get it done. But <laughs> I, I, I encourage you to uh, still uh, submit it. All right. And so um, two more, the alleys. So there are two alleys. Um, that um, have been in for quite some time. Um, and so I would, I guess, send that to you for it to be looked at when you start your Palooza to see if it can be con considered. Yes. Um, all right, they've been dated. Also, with respect to, like, we, it took a while for us to get Riggs Road uh, redone. Mm -hmm. And so now we have the PEPCO infrastructure coming through. Residents are concerned that we've got the new streets and now this other, you know, this project is coming. Pepco is saying that it'll be put back in place. Will that be the case as far as you know from DDOT? Will that roadway be new again um, after this work? 
Yes. Um, so the great thing is that um, we do know that construction sucks and that it does impact um, all users of the streets um, and, and definitely the residents that live within the area. Um, the good thing, though, is that we hold Pepco um, um, liable for the rest of the full restoration of the road. Um, and so when they finalize their road work, they are responsible for uh, rehabilitating the, the, the road or the area where they um they uh like excavated um and so if you see any public um uh, public like road or like they're not following any like public road regulations or standards let me know for example it could be something where um uh, the uh, Pepco or the utility company is leaving the road um, or the area uncovered, or it's not safe, for example, like um, by cyclists when they um, uh, uh, go over the, the steel plates or there's uh, debris um, on the road. Let me know because I can send a public uh, space inspector to evaluate okay. and determine if the utility company is abiding by um, our standards. And then when they finish the, the construction, then we go out there, evaluate and make sure that the road is rehabilitated. Um, okay. One thing though, uh, over the winter time, if they do happen to finish their road work over the winter time, um, we do allow them to uh, put temporary patching on the area um, due to the, 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 the cold um, weather. Um, mm -hmm. And then during the springtime, again, um, they come back or, or when the uh, temperature is warmer, they come back and do a, a full rehabilitation. Awesome. Lastly, the, the leeway, I'm calling it a leeway. So from the street to the curb, um, it used to be when sidewalks were redone, there was that leeway that, that goes from the curb to the street. I was told by yourself that that does not happen anymore. And so if a person wants that leeway, um, there is a process that they have to ask DDOT for permission to build their own leeway. Is that correct? That is accurate. You would, okay. um, the resident would have to request a, um, a permit from our uh, TOPS um, uh, uh, website where I, where I can put the um, link as well um, okay. so that they can uh, request and they can um, pay and um, you know, construct that, um, uh, that leadway in front of their, their home. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> No problem. Thank you. Commissioner Yates, could you read the questions in the Q&A in the chat, please? Yeah, sure. Mimi Richardson wants to know, what is the timeline? I think we may have covered this. What's the timeline for handicapped packaging signs? So we'll count that one as answered. How can we get the no buses or trucks signs updated on the northbound side of 3rd Street Northeast at 3rd and Rittenhouse Street Northeast? Um, it's for, if, if it's for signage, you can put a 311 service request, but better yet, uh, send me an email so that I can uh, take a look at it and see how um, I can uh, either get the process started or um, if I can prioritize it. Okay. Are this from David oh, Uber, I'll, I'll jump in. What, okay. One second before you go to that question. Um, that's a request that I sent to you. So I'll forward it back to you so you have the information. Yes, thank go you. Ahead, go ahead. All right, from um, David Eubanks, are the slow streets barriers in 4B temporary or there are other traffic calming structures that are going to be installed? Um, so the slow streets signs are, um, uh, will be installed uh, up until the public health emergency um, ends. Um, and it will be like, I think 125 days after um, the um, public emergency. Um, we are looking at like different ways that we can um, see maybe it's some res. I know we've uh, some residents have expressed um, just having the the slow street signs up even after the public health emergency. So we have uh, taken into account those comments. Um, if there are specific traffic calming measurements um, that you would uh, like to see in your um, in, in in that block, um, then I, I would highly recommend you to go through the through the TSA process. Um, or if you'd like a speed hump. 
jump. You don't need a TSA uh, process. A lot of the roads that are slow streets are local streets. And so that means that, um, you know, we can go, we can just go ahead and install a speed hump as long as we have an ANC resolution. Um, so if it's, if it's something that uh, is specific that you like in that block or that specific block or that area, let me know that your ANC commissioners, um, all, everyone here, um, they're really great and, and knowing and understanding what the need is of the community. So if you haven't engaged with your ANC commissioner, um, you know, let me know. Um, I can, I'm also happy to, you know, like get on a call with you and talk over what is the need, what are the concerns. Um, happy to, you know, tag along with the ANC commissioner and just overview it. Um, I, I still attend a um, site visit, so I'm happy to just um, start coordinating um, with whomever um, needs assistance with, with traffic safety. So uh, Gordon and Aaron dropped a link in the chat, but if you want to very briefly, Dion Pascal wants to know, what is the TSA process? Just a high level overview. Yes. So a uh, TSA process is you would have to um, uh, fill out a questionnaire that is on our website. And that questionnaire basically provides, uh, provides us an insight of what the concerns are from the community. You get a signature from your ANC commissioner and then you send it over to the email that is on the um, traffic safety um, uh, assessment questionnaire. And um, once we receive it, we verify with the commissioner um, that uh, we can you know, move forward with the request. Um, one, we do that just to make sure that the ANC commissioner is aware of, of the requests that are coming through um, their, their SMD as well. And uh, once that is finalized, then um, we, we evaluate it to determine what is the need. Again, if the request is to um, have a, a camera or a, a four-way stop sign, then um, we would need data. And if it needs data, we send it to our third party to collect that data. And, um, and then we wait for that data to come up. Um, we look at the data, then we provide a, a summary of that data via a report that we write out. Um, and then we send that report to the, um, the, the requester along with the ANC commissioner with the data um, uh, results and also with recommendations in regards to whether the uh, request was warranted um, via uh, federal regulations or if it was not warranted, we provide that information. And then we provide the uh, requester in, like recommendations on what can be done in case um, that uh, information was not um, was not in, in, in case that um, specific request was not warranted, like a, a, a four-way stop sign, then we provide additional recommendations. Okay. Uh, uh, we have one. Just, unfortunately, I'm sorry. Go we ahead, have Evan. one and more in the Q and A. Do you want me to read it, or shall we move on? Yeah, I would like to move on at this point. Okay. Um, I put Sarah's information in the chat. Anyone that has a question can um, contact her directly. Um, I, I had an internal goal of trying to complete this meeting by 930, and I think that we've given an adequate amount of time to every presenter tonight. So um, I want to get to the consent calendar and the resolutions and try to honor that commitment to be completed by 930 if we can. Um, so thank you, Ms. Molina. I appreciate it. Um, as I said, I put her contact information in the chat for anyone that wants to reach out to her directly. Um, her cell phone number is 202-714-9197 for those of you that can't see the, the chat right now. Okay. Thank you. Have um, so, um, thank you. We will now consider item number nine on our agenda, which is our consent calendar. Um, do any of the, I'll read the resolutions and if someone desires to have something removed, you need to let me know. Otherwise, we'll take our votes for tonight. Um, resolution 4B21-0201, calling for improved mechanisms to address abandoned cars within the city, uh, specifically within 4B. 4B21-0202 is requesting uh, speed humps on the 300 block of Longfellow Street Northwest. 4B21-0203 is requesting traffic calming measures within single member district 4B04. Um, if there's no objection, uh, or I'm sorry, if there's, is there interest in having anything removed? 
No. Um, so let's take a vote. I again ask that everyone raise their hand so I can actually see who voted. Um, so uh, all in favor of passing the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. All in favor. Um, thank you very much. The next resolution on the agenda is uh, 4B210204, providing feedback on and expressing opposition to WMATA's proposed budget and service cuts in ANC 4B. Commissioner Yates. Yes, good evening, everybody. Uh, the full text of the resolution is available on the ANC4B website, anc4b.com. Um, in short, uh, our commission is served by numerous uh, Metro bus lines. We have no other um, uh, transit service by any other agency of any significance. We're also served um, by Metro's red line and adjacent to Metro's green and yellow line. Um, as you may know, uh, Metro has proposed significant cuts um, to those services um, <laughs> beginning uh, six months into the fiscal year 2022 uh, budget. Um, this uh, resolution expresses the feelings of the commission that these transit services are essential and that we should try to preserve them however possible, including uh, Metro taking measures that they have so far not taken to ensure they have the revenue to maintain these services, such as taking the allowable 3% jurisdiction increase under the compact. Um, and also um, given that the cuts are coming six months down the road um, to come back to the community uh, in six months when they're gonna make the cuts um, rather than just set it and forget it um, and let this all travel off a cliff uh, together uh, down the road after this process is complete. Um, I'm welcome, I welcome any questions from the commission. I tried to uh, include all the service that is uh, affected in different areas of uh, 4B, not just the ones in um, 4B01. Um, and uh, I just like to say personally that I think if we're gonna have a strong economic recovery, um, from COVID, Metro is going to have to be a part of it. It's an essential part of our recovery and essential for our, um, our, both our economy and for the people who live here and depend on it. Is there a motion? I make a motion to a approve the resolution. I'll second. Mm -hmm. All right, second, all in favor? Again, aye, and raise your hand, please. Uh, aye. I see all the hands, uh, so motion uh, passes. Thank you, motion passes. Um, next resolution will be 4B210205, Establishing a Recreation and Community Space Committee. Commissioner Huff. Hi, thank you so much, um, Madam Chair. Um, I'm looking for support in the uh, 4B Commission, we have four recreation centers, Tacoma, Lamont, Lamont Briggs, and Emory. Um, and this would be in support of DPR with outreach planning, uh, community inclusion, operations and maintenance, programming, organized and coordinated activities. Um, and so it would have um, a committee of seven um, and I would look for um, constituents, residents within that, that um, order to assist in driving forward programs, um, making sure our sites are well maintained um, and um, community inclusion. So I'm looking for your support in pushing this resolution forward. Um, to work to better our recreation centers. Are there any questions? None in the chat? No. Awesome. And so, um, chat. I'm sorry? No? no? Go ahead. I'm sorry. None are in the chat. Right. So, Chair, it moved to establish a recreation and um, community uh, support for our centers. Thank you. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 All hands are raised. Aye. Tiffany, your hand was raised, right? Commissioner Aye. Tiffany Johnson? Aye. Okay, I can see it now. <laughs> Thank you. So all are in favor. The motion passes. Um, with your virtual background, sometimes your hand sort of disappears, Commissioner Johnson. <laughs> I'm trying to, um, you know, my last, daughter just taught me this. So. <laughs> the last item on the agenda is Resolution 4B210206, providing feedback on 65% design of Metropolitan Branch Trail from Fort Totten to Tacoma. Commissioner Bromagen. Yeah, hi. Thanks. Um, so the completion of you know, this segment of the Metropolitan Branch Trail has been talked about for a long time. Uh, and ANC4B has weighed in many times. Uh, the reason for doing this resolution is that DDOT held a public uh, meeting with their latest 65% uh, completed plan uh, on February 10th. And so a few of us wanted to uh, respond specifically to some of the things that came up in that meeting. So, um, they, the, the resolution is available on our website for everyone um, who would like to see exactly what that is. I'll be very brief. Uh, we basically had four things that we included in there. Um, one is asking for requesting DDOT to expedite um, with the National Park Service, uh, studying the al alternate route on First Street Northeast and McDonald Place. Uh, a second one is requesting inclusion of improved lighting under the Van Buren underpass at Van Buren and Blair Road. Uh, a, th for a third con consideration, we, uh, we requested installation of a four-way stop at the intersection of Whittier and Third, um, as that, that sort of, uh, the, the intersections that come together there would be redesigned and we, we, we also, uh, included support for um, turning the one block between Whittier and Blair into a one way. Um, and then lastly, uh, the resolution requests DDOT to um, consider including a turn signal or turn lane at the intersection of Aspen and Blair for cars that are turning left from Aspen onto Blair. Um, so I think that basically covers it. I won't talk any longer about it in the interests of the 930 completion of this meeting, but um, well, I'm, I am happy to talk more about it if people have questions. 930 is just a little, you know, it's a goal. It doesn't mean we have to rush through something. So is there a motion? I move that we approve the resolution. I'll second. Back in. I second. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all I see Brenda's fingers. Okay. I think that's everyone. So the motion passes. So this is um, the last item. That was the last item on our agenda. Um, before we conclude, I have one quick announcement that I did not have at the beginning of the meeting. And that is that tomorrow, the Crush Funk Band is doing a pop-up performance in front of DC Bilingual at 11 a.m. One of the members of the band is the band director at the school, is an educator at the school. Um, and from 11 to 1, they will be distributing food to families. So we invite everyone to come out and enjoy a performance and get some food if needed um, and stay socially distant all mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, with that, I will accept and I will accept a motion to adjourn the meeting. Unless I make a to motion to adjourn. Motion adjourn. <laughs> Second. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you for your participation.